Well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I am Watsu K99. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoy what you're watching, a thumbs up is very much appreciated. Feel free to subscribe and share with a friend. Uh, around 250 subscribers right now, and I want to keep on growing this thing. If you subscribed already, thank you so much. So I want to do a video here on the New York Rangers. Now, the Rangers of all the teams I root for have been as consistently good as any of them. And they have not gotten off to a very uh, successful start, shall we say. Uh, after winning their first two games, they have amounted just one point in their last six games, losing to a couple of teams that are not expected to be very good. There was an overtime loss in Winnipeg, then losses to San Jose and Columbus. So technically, it's a three-game losing streak that they're on, and they've only had two three-game losing streaks last season. The last two games in particular were absolutely unacceptable. I could deal with a loss in Winnipeg coming off a of back-to-back. They ran into a hot goalie in Connor Hellebuck, who's a very, very good goalie. But the way that they played against both San Jose and Columbus was incredibly disappointing. San Jose was 0-5 coming into that game. Uh, Columbus is just not that good. The biggest thing for me is the third period. Last year, the Rangers, they lived on dominating teams in the third period. Last year, in the third period, they had a goal differential of plus 37 in the third period. Now, forget it. They have been sleepwalking. They have been looking lethargic. Now, you might say, Ad, come on, Adam. It's, it's early in the season. It's early on. You know, there's plenty of time. You know what? I don't want to hear about it being early right now. This Metropolitan Division, the competition is fierce. You know, let's think about it. You've got Carolina. We all know how good they are. Pittsburgh and Washington aren't going away. They're off to very good stops, uh, very good starts. The Devils have a very good team speed. They're going to be reckoned with. Philadelphia is off to a fast start. I hate to tell you this, and I'm sorry uh, to the blue and orange out there, but the one, <laughs> one team that does not look good is the Islanders. <laughs> You know, they just have trouble handling speed, but with such a good metropolitan division, you can't afford to throw points in the way. I don't care if it's in October. I don't care if it's in April. This isn't Edmonton that they're losing to. This isn't Colorado they're losing to. They're losing to San Jose and Columbus in regulation. Not good enough. And uh, speaking of Colorado, that's who the Rangers have tonight. Oh, well, you know what I'm going to take out of that? The Rangers beat up Tampa Bay in their first game of the season when the competition was high. Maybe they'll do the same thing tonight in a game that's going to be on ESPN. So uh, Alex Georgiev will be coming back to play goalie for Colorado. Dryden Hunt, who the Rangers just lost to Colorado on waivers, will be playing. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about the rest of that, that game in just a moment. I, I want to say one thing about the goaltending. I don't understand what Gerard Gallant was doing with that Columbus game. And I'm a big Gerard Gallant fan. Um, he, I think he's been a very, very good hire. Now, he has this philosophy, though, of not playing one of his goalies back-to-back. -back. You know, he wants to use both the regular starting goalie and the backup goalie unless it's the playoffs. That's fine. But here's the issue. Why do you play Colum why do you play Halak against Columbus? The Rangers have two back-to-backs coming up. Tonight against Colorado, tomorrow against the Islanders, and then this coming weekend, they've got back-to-backs on the road in Dallas against a very good Dallas team and Arizona in that college building that they play in. So if that's the case, if Golan holds to his philosophy of not playing a goalie back-to-back -back days. That means in a five-game stretch, you're playing your backup, Halak, three times. There is no reason that that should ever happen unless Igor Shosturkin is hurt. So to me, I, I really question the management of the goaltending here by, uh, by Coach Golan. The other thing to be concerned about is Philip Hedl, who's going to be out at least four games due to a concussion. And that is going to mess things up because he has been a very good center, third-line center. You know, we started to see it in the playoffs last year, how he's really starting to sort of figure out the NHL game. And he's been playing well this year with a complete battery of line mates, whether it's Jimmy Vesey, Barkley Goodrow, Alexei Lafreniere. Uh, you know, all kinds of different players have been playing with him. Kratsoff. You know, he's played a couple of shifts with Hedl, and uh, he's been playing pretty well. Now you're going to have to look at Barkley Goodrow centering the third line, most likely. 
And this is where losing Dryden Hunt, we come back to Colorado, that's where this hurts because the Rangers have a lot of players who are making a lot of money, well paid. Well, pay, well paid and well deserved. You know, these players, Abinajad, Fox, Kreider, Truba, Shesterkin, they've earned these contracts. But that is what can hurt you with your depth. When you get injuries like the Rangers have been getting, you know, this player's missed a couple games, this player's missed a couple of games. You know, specifically, I'm talking about Kretzoff and uh, now Heedle. This is where you get exposed. And now you don't have Dryden Hunt to plug in there anymore. You know, even Edmonton, they had to play with, I think, 11 forwards. Uh, yeah, 11 forward. They had to play a forward down, one skater down because of salary cap restrictions. So NHL, wake up. Yes, I did a quick transition there to the league as a whole. You know, the salary cap is not high enough, and this is not a Rangers problem. You know, about half the teams in the league have a million dollars or less in cap space. And then when you get injuries, you can't call a player up from the minors if he has... You know, if he's making eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars because you don't have the cap space, you know, to absorb it anymore. So just want to get a little bit of uh, thoughts out on the Rangers. This uh, game against the Avalanche tonight is going to be very exciting. Uh, two teams that a lot of people are predicting uh, could play for the Stanley Cup this year. And the Avalanche are definitely going to bring that firepower to the uh, to this game. And to see Igor Shesterkin try to stop it, it's going to be a heck of a matchup. And to see uh, Alex Georgiev play who was pining for a starting opportunity with the Rangers. You know, he's never been one to keep his emotions inside. So, uh, you know, I don't have any Ill, Ill will towards him. He wanted an opportunity to start. Now he has it. God bless him. But uh, tonight, hey, let's see if the Rangers uh, can light him up the way that we know that they're capable of doing. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you back here with more content from the Wicker Chair.